So first of all, uh, uh, our chips story is like a web series now, right? So a lot of people all over the world are seeing it. And just for sake of appropriateness, I just want to tell the worldwide viewers that uh, no animals were harmed in this uh, while shooting this series because everybody was very concerned that there was a you know our fellow Mozart was uh, around and today is he around anywhere looks like today he didn't show up for the lecture okay so the next one we're going to talk about so the meat convey revolution that happened people were starting to do designs uh, one of the organizations in US is called DARPA I don't think um, you may have not have heard it that's a symbol it's a defense advanced research uh, program agency Okay, so what they were doing is they realized that, hey, this is really important for our country and we really need to uh, get more and more people doing things. It's government, but it's not government. Okay, it's funded by the government, but it's a separate organization. So they kind of made sure that none of the political people will get involved in it. So they, they separated it out. It's like, uh, okay, here is the money and uh, we will kind of watch over you what you guys are doing, but uh, you have to do things so that we can light the fire as I like to say. So they just wanted to light the fire with this meat convey revolution. They wanted more and more people to get into this. They wanted universities to start exploring this, uh, this idea. Okay. So first thing that came out of that, which was again, you know, uh, Lynn Conway, she started this whole process was Moses. Uh, you know, this was like a service, foundry service that they offered. So here, the foundry was a separate place, right? And they were doing certain uh, processing and they made it accessible to everyone. Uh, Moses through Moses. Okay, so for example, my PhD project, my master's project, everything. I mean, I did like six or seven chips during that time. All of them were funded. Uh, basically, they went through Moses. So it's like you know we have a uh, we have a printing shop, uh, the Guru Photo Studio, right? That's outside. Uh, it's like that, you know. So the Guru Photo he takes charges a lot of money to print. So then all of us pull together and put our designs in one shot. That kind of thing. So then this Moses was an organization which would take designs from everyone. Uh, they would provide the rules, regulations, everything to everyone, all the universities, anybody who wants to participate. And then what would happen is divide by N effect. Uh, the cost of tape out is divided by number of people who are participating. Now suddenly the tape out became affordable, right? Sending the chips out for fabrication, measuring the chips. And then uh, all the people in the academia got involved in it. They wanted to. So that's why all these circuits which we are learning in the classroom, uh, that's the way they are invented. The original intent was, of course, develop advanced circuits for military applications. Okay, So push the technology limit so that we can use that technology, whatever is done, for military applications to get better and better. Okay, But then at the same time, um, you know, it was being used for improving the educational inf infrastructure. They wanted to increase the number of chip designers substantially. Um, they wanted to have, uh, you know, excellent relationship between industry and academia. So, for example, I was trained in the academia. Uh, I figured it out, but then I was absorbed into, into the industry. So I could do immediately on day one, I could do everything, tape out. It was a very fruitful relationship, uh, in my opinion, uh, to, to go through DARPA. Many of the projects were funded by DARPA. Uh, there was a reasonable independence that they were given. Okay, you know within certain playground you can play nobody will kind of come and interfere in any way uh, there was no politics involved getting in, into this right so the darpa did a lot of good work uh, if you look at darpa websites you know starting with a mouse so many inventions came from funding given by darpa hmm? so semiconductor research corporation was also founded around that time and there also uh, it started with giving grants to uc berkeley and carnegie mellon in the 80s okay um, and then uh, these grants were again used for you know anything to do with chip design right what can we do what are the different projects so they are all at that time it felt like blue sky projects uh, but then you know they kind of came along and every step of the way the technology limits were advanced okay and all of this stuff why is it happening moore's law so you can see how important the Moore's law was, right? Because it gave a goal to everyone that, oh, next year we got to be here. Next year we got to be here. And everyone was uh, putting together their efforts to improve not just technology, but then you have to utilize that technology also. Every step of it. SRC, again, you know, I was a recipient of funding from SRC. And, you know, that's why I know how, uh, how it works. One of the kind of, it started out as a side thing, but then it became a big thing was uh, their support for uh, electronics uh, design automation tools. Okay, then you would think that, oh, this is just a bunch of software, right? But then this software really kicked uh, the next jump. 
okay because if you want to do complex chips digital analog rf whatever you got to have software which is 100% you cannot have bugs in that software okay and out of this src came out three companies and all of them you know right now and they're still existing which is cadence synopsis and mentor graphics and all three are you know big stalwarts uh, still existing right now after 40 50 years and they are pushing the limits basically without the software you cannot design the chips anymore okay and interestingly cadence the ceo of the cadence dr anirudh devgan he is from iit network a uh, good friend of mine i'm really proud of what he has achieved so he is the ceo of uh, cadence so he's doing really good work there india so what's happening in india i wanted to connect the dots so that you get a feel for what we are doing in india right so we have ministry of electronics and information technology that's from government of india so what they have started a uh, few programs they, there is one i'm just listing couple of them related to that but they have so many other programs uh, one is called design link incentive so they are promoting startups to get into this so they can do the designs okay and c2s is chip to startup program so um, we are recipient of chip to startup program at iit bombay my team and we are developing uh, the navic chip uh, for production application trying to take it into actual applications and there doesn't exist any solution right now using our own satellites the solutions exist for gps but we are try we are doing it with our our own satellites and we are developing it in such a way that we can not just do navic solution but we can do worldwide any solution so our chip can go worldwide that's what we have started out as a goal so that's a um, so far so good let's where it, uh, where the future takes us communications there is so much availability of electronics like advanced chips technology which is available somebody has to use it so this is like a different angle that i want to show you um, so far they were doing chips for processing uh, the next computer the next computer the next computer so it was all compute power that was being used but now came a different mode aa gaya quality communications so i want to tell you the story about it based uh, arvin jacobs arvin jacobs he was a ucsd professor he came he was a restaurant guy actually interesting right so imagine you are you are running a restaurant and he you are from that family and uh, you know as he grew up he found that oh electrical engineering is cool right he joined mit he graduated from mit and then he came up with this idea of code divisions multiplexing okay so the, the i'll just tell you the insight so that you can appreciate it the key idea there was uh, you take the information you multiply by some random number okay and then what will happen is the information that you have let's say it's a tone it will get spread out okay um because of the nature of uh, multiplying by a random number right it will spread out and now you sniff it on the other side and you multiply by the same code okay you have to know the code if you don't know the code then you are out of luck right so then if you know the code then you can reconstruct the spectrum so that was the code division multiplexing and then you could get set of codes which are orthogonal to each other which means that one code will not mess with other code type of thing and those codes that's what he came up with this was his invention and i'll tell you what it did was we could pack more in the spectrum so right now if you are on the airwaves right you know 93.7 uh, radio mirchi then you know you have akashwani it's a 97.8 whatever they have to be spaced apart and they have to be spaced apart by certain distance so that they don't interfere with each other so given channel you can only pack so much information what these guys did i mean i'm saying guys because the next person comes in is going to be also taking lion share uh, is how do i pack more data into that small spectrum okay now suddenly the spectrum was becoming expensive at that time next person is andrew witterby uh, italian guy he again you know training from mit usc university of southern california and he was also ucsd professor both of them jacobs and witterby they were working together at ucsd and they decided to start a company uh, for military applications so witterby what he came up with was something called witterby algorithm any one of you exposed to this never heard of witterby right so you will now um, because as you go through electrical engineering you will we will go through this so here basically how do you decode signals digital signal in presence of noise so as you start communicating over the air there is going to be a lot of noise int introduced and in presence of that noise how can i reliably decode the signals so you can see the combination between the two you know jacobs and witterby working together in the same place and um, you know they are coming up with this complementary uh, expertise right again error correction codes probably you have heard about that that he came up with they started a company called qualcom i think all of you have heard of qualcom right so huge success story what they ended up doing was using advanced dsp techniques to you know basically it utilize all the big chips 
that were coming out you know to push push the limits of the chip technology because it's one thing to produce better and better chips but it's yet another to suck out that usability into actual product right and that's what they ended up doing and this was like a killer app as i like to call it you know killer app meaning communications everybody wanted more and more and more and more and people were hungry right so nobody thought that you could do what we are doing today you know if you took me in time uh, 1990s this was like science fiction for us what you guys have in your hands right for me it was science fiction just to do a video call okay at that time because we could only talk on the phone it would cost me 4 dollars a minute to make a call and half of my salary would go in phone calls to india literally right so that was my budget allocation uh, and now for free right day in day out you are on the phone um, you don't even talk to each other you only talk to each other through phones right so uh, that's what is happening so it's the revolution that happened the digital communications revolution that's where it started i'm not giving all the credit to only these guys but it kind of started with that and it snowballed into a big uh, thing where uh, you know where we are today so this is where it started at around the same time a lot of action was happening in taiwan um, and the reason i'm telling you about taiwan is i'm setting the stage for our next episode what was happening in taiwan was taiwan is in trouble okay people realized it at that time uh, because what were they doing what were ta taiwan singapore malaysia what were they doing at that time whatever was happening in us they were doing the the low end job relatively packaging testing all those kind of things they were doing and they were happy uh, because people were in farms instead of that they were in the factories now and they were making a good livelihood so standard of living was going up in taiwan but people in taiwan and especially the key person that i want you to and he is also in my opinion an unsung hero of this revolution so i just want to give him some prominence here uh, because you need to know huh? quotingly was trained in cambridge and he came back and you know he was their most minister most is ministry of science and Te uh, technology for for taiwan uh, he realized that they are in trouble because they were only doing uh, low hanging fruits china was coming up because of the changes in china which were happening he realized that china is going to eat our lunch lunch dinner everything they are going to eat because huge population and their people were also hungry they needed food on the table so they were willing to work for very low value so talk about united states talk about taiwan and the china was at another level in terms of salaries or payments to be done right so he realized that oh this is trouble i mean uh, talk about foresight right looking 10 years down the road that's what he was thinking so what he wanted to do was again move up in the food chain as i like to call it okay so um, at the around the same time morris chang he was in texas instruments if you remember i i showed you his initial story right and what was the story you remember about morris chang ha huh? he was smoking pipe and in the circles he was giving everybody hard time right you have to imagine that right he was terrorizing everybody that you have to be perfect right and that's how uh, texas instrument really came up uh, because they they really perfected the art of integrated circuits uh, morris chang the story of Ma morris chang is he was younger than me about a uh, few years younger than me at that time and he was put out to pasture the, the term means that when the horses right race horses um, they kind of start getting old uh, like all our cricket players and you put them out to pasture what that means is okay you now just graze you get out of the race type of thing so texas instrument he wanted to be ceo of texas instruments okay but that didn't happen i guess he was unhappy i can imagine so he just kind of quit texas instruments at the peak i mean 52 is uh, maybe at that time it was quite old right now it's 52 is like you know we are still functioning since he was out from ti quotingly he gave him a blank check uh, literally said that boss you come back we have to fix taiwan he said no government nothing involved blank check whatever you want i'll make it happen okay that's what he said morris chang was uh, very perceptive right here is a chance that he had in texas instruments he lost that chance he was also uh, trying to tell people at that time in texas instruments intel that you know we need to separate out fabrication and design earlier they were all merged into the same place if you look at the classical companies at that time fair everyone they were doing design and uh, fabrication at the same time in the same place right so he wanted kind of i like to call it so he wanted oh fabrication guys should be separate and this should be separate fabrication guys should have autonomy on their own so that they will just produce chips for everyone 
and he went with the idea to uh, Texas Instruments. They rejected the idea, hmm? um, and then uh, he went to Intel. So the story is that Gordon Moore, he kind of looked at this idea and said, he knew Morris Chang very well. So he said, you know, Morris, you have a lot of great ideas, but this is not one of them. So he was ridiculed in a way. You know, I'm just setting the stage for his mindset at that time. So imagine Gordon Moore telling you this, right? And he is the one he wanted to be one of the next Moore, Noise and Chang. That's what he wanted to be, right? It's the next revolution. So he came back, Wattingly uh, said that, okay, you come back uh, to Taiwan and then uh, I'll give you a blank check. So he was made head of uh, ITRI, which is uh, Industrial Technology Research Institute. Okay. Now, I have had my experience with them. What they have done is amazing. Okay. Everything to do with the chip design, it's all in one place. All in one place, right? You don't have to go outside anywhere. Um, and they make it happen there. Very interesting experience with them. I mean, even the person who's not a technical assistant, they know everything. You know, they, they appreciate all the things that you're trying to do here. So the kicker, as I like to say, is right, before we uh, close our session today, is that both of them were not from Taiwan. People think that they are like, you know, nationalistic, made in India, any Indian coming back and doing all this. They were not from Taiwan. They are actually from China. Okay. So they were from China. They went all over the place. They ran away from China. And eventually they went to Taiwan so that they could make a space for themselves. So this was, uh, they both had fled from China. And then now they are afraid of what China is going to do. And they are in Taiwan and they are going to make our next part of the history happen. Thank you. Okay.